Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on neuropathogenesis and neurologic manifestations of COVID-19. Among the other coronaviruses, it has been seen to be associated with neurotropic effects and they have some association with multiple sclerosis. Apart from these virus, SARS-CoV-1 and MERS have been associated with GB syndrome and encephalitis. Now coming to the SARS-CoV-2, that is the COVID-19 infection, this virus enters primarily to the ACE2 receptors. So these are the sites in the brain where we find the ACE2 receptors, that is the motor cortex, the posterior cingulate cortex, ventricles, substantia nigra, olfactory bulb, middle temporal gyrus, and the ventrolateral medulla. Apart from these places in the brain, the cells that carry the ACE2 receptors are the microglia, the neurons, the oligodendrocytes, and the astrocytes. So let's see what are the mechanisms of neuroinvasion of this particular virus. They primarily spread transsynaptically. They enter through the olfactory nerves, through the inhalational route. There, the viruses are picked up by the endocytosis and there they can reach the brain through the fat microtubules or through vesicles. So there is a retrograde spread. They can also enter the brain through the blood brain barrier. So how do they do this is by the endothelitis. They cause inflammation of the endothelium and through the in infection of the endothelium, they enter the brain. The other mechanism is the Trojan horse approach that is through infected leukocytes. These infected leukocytes through a permeable blood brain barrier enter the brain and cause the infection. So what are the neurological manifestations of COVID-19? The most common manifestation is a headache and it is mainly due to the release of cytokines and chemokines by the macrophages during the various stages of the COVID-19 infection resulting in the stimulation of the nociceptors. The next common thing is anosmia and agusia. The incidence ranges from 5% to 88%, but more recent papers which are coming from Italy and Germany, they tell about the incidence of as high as 80 to 90%. So given the reports of that anosmia presents an early symptom of COVID-19, dedicated testing for anosmia may offer a potential early detection for this particular infection. The third most common presentation is an impaired consciousness. It is reported in 37% of the patients who are admitted to COVID-19 from the Mao study from Wuhan. The possible mechanisms of impaired consciousness are direct infection and damage of the parenchyma, toxic metabolic encephalopathy, seizures, and demyelination. So let's see how toxic metabolic encephalopathy can cause. So the causes of toxic metabolic encephalopathy are the cytokine storm, severe inflammation, sepsis, renal dysfunction, and electrolyte abnormalities. Encephalitis, which is seen primarily as a diffusion restriction in the right temporal lobe and hippocampal atrophy with vasculitis, ventriculitis, and SARS-CoV-2 RNA was detected in the CSF. So there have been very few case studies. This is one of the case series that was published. Apart from that, high level of pro-inflammatory cytokines in CSF can cause a breakdown and increase the permeability of the blood brain barrier, resulting in increased chance of viral invasion. Seizures. Seizures can lead to impairment in consciousness and have been reported in other coronavirus infections. Subclinical seizures have been reported in as much as 10% of the patients who are critically ill. And a recent report of 304 patients who were diagnosed with COVID-19, two patients were found to have seizure-like events. The other presentation is stroke and vascular events. In the Mao study, they reported 5% patients of hospitalized patients who had acute stroke. So, in another study of young patients in from New York, it has seen that even young patients less than 50 years developed large vessel strokes for COVID-19 infection, suggesting that all ages are equally vulnerable. 
Now, vasculitis and hypercoagulability are most likely reasons how stroke and vascular events occur. The other presentation is GB syndrome and peripheral nerve disorders. Reports of GB syndrome in patients with COVID-19 are emerging. There is a case series of five patients from Italy. In that, four cases presented with lower extremity weakness and paresthesia. The patients developed symptoms in a mean 5 to 10 days after the onset of the viral symptoms. EMG showed two patients at AIDP and three patients at AMN. Additional case reports from Iran shows one case of Aman and a patient from Italy showed the Miller-Fisher variant of the GV syndrome. One case from China has been reported to have transverse myelitis. This was from Wuhan and he was treated with IVIG and steroids. So what are the possible CNS therapy effects of the treatments that are given in COVID-19? The three common drugs which have COVID-19 the three common drugs which have neurological manifestations are chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, ramdesivir and toclizumab. Most of them result in altered sensorium and may lower Schizer thresholds. So to summarize, the understanding of the neurologic disease in patients with COVID-19 is evolving. Early detection of neurological deficit may lead to improved clinical outcomes and better treatment algorithms. Further lab and clinical data are required and tests of CSF brain imaging and CNS tissue should be done to elucidate the pathophysiology and the potential for CNS injury. Longitudinal neurological assessment of patients after recovery is essential to understand the natural history of COVID-19 in CNS and monitoring of the potential neurological sequelae. Thank you for your patience and check our website for further information.